Hi, and welcome to City Happenings. I'm Mayor David Black. Papillion continues to grow and offers much to its residents so they can live, work, and play. For more about Papillion, here's City Happenings. Thanks, Mayor Black. The emerald ash tree borer is an insect that bores into ash trees to lay its eggs. And the larva then migrates through the inside of the, the tree surface, and, and that's actually what kills the tree, the feeding of the larva. And it uh, shuts off the uh, uptake of nutrients up into the, the canopy or the leaves of the tree. So once that uh, takes place, then that uh, ash tree will eventually start dying out because of the loss of nutrient uptake. Perkins says the ash borer is pretty to look at, but deadly for our ash trees. It is about a three inch borer that is a metallic green, really beautiful looking borer, but it's very devastating to the ash trees in the community and worldwide actually. And it's uh, migrated into this country from Europe and it's uh, been in about 13 to 14 states and most recently it's finally reached the state of Nebraska. The ash borer is now in Douglas County. This is how you know if your ash tree is infested. The top of the tree will start dying out slowly and come down, uh, losing its leaves. And uh, once the uh, larva is matured, then it digs its way back out and exits the tree. So some of the symptoms that you would see in a ash tree that is infested would be the dieback of the foliage of the tree, and then the exit wounds on the bark along here would be about the size of a D shape coming out of the bark. There are several ways to tell if you have ash trees on your property. The easy way to identify an ash tree is simply by the leaves. Once they're out, there's about a seven to 11 leaves that look similar to this. Well, this is an ash, but they're side by side, and there's seven of them to, a, to, a, to the leaf. The other thing that you can look at is the way the tree grows and branches out. The branches come up out of the trunk, and they're side by side branches as they grow. And the other characteristic that you would look for is the bark. And the bark on the tree is, you can tell by a diamond-shaped, uh, kind of a diamond-shaped pattern to the bark. While tough to prevent against the ash borer, there are things that you can do. If the borer is within a 15-mile radius of your tree, then uh, there are some options for uh, injectable treatments uh, for that uh, tree to prevent that borer from gaining uh, or infesting uh, the ash tree. If you opt to treat the tree, it'll have to be a continuous treatment. Because most treatments that I'm aware of are two-year treatment. So once you treat that, you would have to continue to treat that every two years. The tree's worth can determine if you want to treat your tree. If your tree is a beautiful tree and you have a high value to it, then perhaps a treatment option would be uh, uh, something that you prefer to do. If you had a tree that was perhaps compromised, you know, wind damaged, or in a spot where it's growing into, uh, you know, a bad area or into some power lines, things like that, then you would can strongly consider whether or not you wanted to treat and try to prevent that. Once the tree is infested, the best option is tree removal. It's going to eventually die. It may not, it won't die overnight or within a week or two, but within a year or two, it'll finally die out. So best option in my opinion would be to remove the tree and, and plant a, a different tree in its place and one that would be of uh, you know a nice variety that would fit within your landscape. The Senior Center hosts a monthly jam session. One participant talks about choosing the songs that he plays and sings. It's kind of tough for me because you know over the years I guess I always <laughs> tried to find songs that people other people didn't know you know uh, little known songs uh, by little-known artists, a lot of the old, uh, um, old-time stuff uh, that, uh, like the bluegrass and old-time country music and stuff like that. Um, and that way, when I played it, people couldn't tell me I wasn't doing it right. <laughs> Ludwig says retirement is motivation for him to play in public. I decided that the playing the guitar was going to be one of the things I did. Ludwig uses current technology to his advantage. You know, when I hear so, a, a song that I want to learn, you know, I nowadays on the computer you can find lyrics a lot of times on YouTube, and you can you don't have to go run out and buy the record and that, and you can learn the music. It's taken a while, but Ludwig has compiled a playlist of 1,000 songs. 
I can't play them all right now because I'd have to practice them, but things that I've worked out. And uh, um, I, I like I like playing for people. I, I like sharing my music. It, it's, it's okay, it's great sitting at home and playing, but uh, it's, it's nicer when you can go play with other people. Audience participation is a pleasant and welcome result. A lot of times the people here, they will get with me and sing with me and the assisted living places, a lot of, a lot of them will sometimes sing with me too. And so it's, it's, I have a good time with it. Ludwig encourages anyone who thinks they want to play and or sing, they should take that step and just do it. If you have any motivation toward music, uh, it, it, it makes you think, it, uh, it exercises your mind, um, it's, I don't know, it's good for the soul, it, it's good socially to get together with people and play, to sing, uh, I don't know, it's, to, to me, music is, is great. <laughs> Sump Library had a volunteer recognized by the state legislature earlier this year. She says her library experience will have positive effects on her life. I love kids, like I said, so I want to be a NICU nurse when I grow up. And so I'm kind of working towards steps with that. But yeah, I think this will help open a lot of doors for me. Allison says getting state legislature recognition is great, but it won't affect how she does her job. I would have done it either way. I love what I do here and I wouldn't change it. <laughs> Allison gives her thoughts on the library's worth. I think it's very important, especially to get kids reading young. Um, I, we have a lot of kids that come in here just to have story time and listen to the books, and they love it, and I think that's great. That's what's happening around Papillion. There are lots of ways to stay up to date with what's happening. You can find us on Facebook, follow the City of Papillion on Twitter, or even watch our YouTube channel. And of course, information about all of our departments and programs is available on our website. For more about Papillion, go to www.papillion.org or just call the mayor's hotline at 402-827-1111. Thanks for watching.